Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Massive Tutorials. So in the previous tutorial we showed you how to set up a MIDI controller with Massive. We had Massive in standalone mode and we just kind of went through right click MIDI learn and uh, assigned from our MIDI controller, assigned different controllers to control various different parameters on Massive and also showed you how to save those setups in the file drop down menu in Massive and then go into options and MIDI and then saving these setups and uh, today I've got Massive, last week we had it in standalone mode, today I've got Massive loaded inside Logic, Logic's my door and uh, I'm going to show you a different couple of other different methods for setting up a MIDI controller as um, with Massive as I've experienced a couple of issues using Massive MIDI controllers with Massive inside Logic I've got Machine Mark 2 controller here and uh, I went through before and I set up a, my 8 rotary knobs on my Machine Mark 2 I've assigned them to these macros down here so if I move my first one it's going to move macro 1 um, and my second one it's going to move macro 2 and you can see those movements happening there and, uh, and so on and uh, one of the reasons why I struggle with this this method inside Logic is because the way to now record some automation in is uh, just simply hit record and then start moving one of these controllers around. So I'm going to hit record and try and record in some cutoff frequency movement here. We've got this first macro set up to control the filter of this synth. So hit record. And I can see here that it's not actually recorded those movements. If I play this sequence back now, you can see that cutoff frequency is not moving. So recording MIDI data inside Logic, I'm not sure what it's like with Cubase or Ableton. It doesn't seem to, when we've assigned a MIDI learn function to one of our eight macros, it doesn't seem to record these in so well but if I assigned MIDI learn now to um, the cutoff frequency of the filter and remove it from the macro one and another thing I struggle with is even though we've got a MIDI assignment set up saved here and I've got these these macro these macros being controlled by my Machine Mark II controller I notice that now already I'm moving the third rotary knob and it's not moving my macro control number 3 and um, as I go through everything's still working fine if I now go to my options make sure I save this MIDI setup I can just save it as um, Machine Macros save that OK and now let's load up a different patch in here and now none of my rotary knobs are actually controlling any of the macros that I'd assigned to or 5 and 6, 7, 8 and no, no, so I'm moving the, rotary, the first rotary knob on Machine Mark 2 controller and nothing's happening on this first macro here so I find with inside Logic, I don't know what it's like for other Logic users or Cubase Ableton users, it'd be interesting to know, but inside Logic, the massive MIDI learn function and setting that up with your controller is very temperamental, as you can see there. And uh, so sat now we've got machine, the first rotary knob's not doing anything on the first macro control. And um, if I now assign it to the cutoff frequency, MIDI learn, uh, okay, so after a bit of fiddling around, I've now got my third, somehow my third rotary knob, and the Machine Mark 2 controller is assigned to the cutoff frequency of this filter. So now, with that set up, I can actually record in some automation data. So if I hit record again, and we can see here. Now, when I tried to record in using the macros before, it didn't seem to record it in Logic, but any of the other controllers, it will record fine. Um, but a lot of your automation will be assigned down here in the macro section of Massive, so it's not great. But it has recorded, you can see there, it's recorded that automation data, that MIDI control. It's 
it's recorded that, which is great. But um, I actually find inside Logic, if I want to assign uh, MIDI controllers, I find a much easier, sort of more straightforward way of doing things. Although it's very straightforward if it works okay to just right click MIDI Learn and start moving your controller. It, it's very temperamental in Logic, so uh, I find it much easier. Is to use automation quick access inside Logic. So first thing we want to do really is go to options, MIDI options, and this current set of machine macros where we've got a couple of assignments going on and they're not really working properly. But we want to kind of get rid of that really because I don't want to confuse the MIDI messages that we're sending into Logic. So load up this my default CC, which is kind of an empty uh, MIDI map really, MIDI controller map that you. It comes with massive in the options there, so load that, hit OK, OK, and now let's um, maybe load up a different uh, synth sound. I think it's something that we can record in some. Some nice filter automation. That will be okay. So now what we need to do now is go into our automation quick access in Logic. Go to the mix drop down menu. Enable automation quick access there. And it said it's not yet defined. We need to assign some controllers here. In the moment you can see it's on. With automation quick access on. If I go back to massive. And just click one of my controllers there. And then move the MIDI control here, move this rotary knob on machine. I've assigned number one to the first macro. Assign number just click on that macro control there and then move your controller and um keep going really. Just click on the control and then move the kind of rotary knob or the MIDI control. And um, we don't need to necessarily do all the macros, we could assign the filter cut off here to my fifth rotary knob on my Machine Mark 2 controller, assign the amp here, or the amp of oscillator 2, and so on. And so I've got those eight controllers assigned there, and then hit done. So finished assigning automation quick access in there. So now I move the first rotary knob on Machine Mark 2 controller. You can see it's assigned to the filter, and the second is assigned to the LFO amp. LFO shape, unison, and my fifth controller is signed to the cutoff frequency. And then, yeah, I can control the amp of the oscillators as well. So, and the great thing about this is, as I was showing you before, with the macro controls, when you record in some automation, when you set it up using MIDI Learn, it doesn't seem to record in that MIDI data. Uh, but with things set up in this way, close this now. All I need to do is put this channel into latch mode here and then hit play. And what I'm going to do is hit play and I'm going to move all these eight controllers. LFO amp, LFO shape, cut off frequency, amp, three oscillators. see all of this stuff moving now, all these parameters, if you hit, what we need to do actually now is make sure if you've finished assigning kind of automation in there, make sure you go back to read mode in Logic and then all of these movements are recorded in, if I now get my automation drop down menu in here, you can see all of that automation in there. Designers, and then I can go and edit that if I want to. So I apologize that we're showing you in Logic and it's not Ableton or Cubase, but it might be the MIDI Learn features with Massive may behave a little bit better in those programs. Uh, as you could see there at the start of this tutorial, it doesn't behave brilliantly with Massive inside Logic and your MIDI Learn and stuff. So I tend to use the automation quick access, but like I was showing you before, the, the the whole idea behind this is showing you to set up a MIDI controller with Massive so you can do stuff like 
real life kind of filter sweeps where you're not programming it in with a mouse, you're actually swapping to latch mode. And just recording those automations in live and it just creates a much more kind of human sort of organic kind of feel with with your kind of like your filter sweeps and your decays and your envelopes opening your LFOs and stuff like that so come check us out the next tutorial and next couple of tutorials in this series we're going to get a little bit more hands-on with the kind of practical applications of having a MIDI controller controlling parameters in Massive and how we can use it and stuff so the kind of technical stuff's a little bit out of the way now we can just sort of focus on more creative stuff in the next couple of tutorials so I hope you enjoyed that any questions please let me know and uh, yeah I hope to see you in the next video all right cheers bye